Looks like goddamn Mario Kart. Checkered everything. There's something on the car. The hand. Daddy's home. What the shit? Race control. Right. One more car and I'm taking it out of your ass. I'm gonna take this track and make it my bitch. Did you know that races are one on the I I did not know that. Did you not? The IMS is the best there ever was. Daddy doesn't do road cars. <laughs> Daddy only does ovals. <laughs> we certainly don't take ourselves that seriously, so you shouldn't. Welcome to Fast Cars, Fast Girls with Abby and Molly. It's season two, episode 39. What do you say? Let's warm up the tires. Let's do it. So today we've got some news. <laughs> news is one word. Yes. Um, Snooze. Oh, yes. We've got our woman of the week. We've got our born racer review. Finally. I think it has been a month since we first saw it. It has been. About. So we've given you all ample time to see it yourselves. So spo I mean, spoilers will be included. So so don't at us. Yeah. Because we don't care. We don't. Nope. Not at all. And bit. then lastly, one of our favorites, shit we didn't make up. I think it's an appropriate show we didn't make of. I think so, too. Yeah. Oh, and we've got a listener question we're going to tag on at the end. We sure do. So that's there, too. All right. So news. Oh, boy. Well, let's start with the good news. Let's start with the good news. Sure. So Michael Shank Racing, <laughs> who we love. Yeah, by already. The way. Yeah. Already. Before uh, this. Before this. Yeah. yeah. Um, had an all-female team announcement. Mm -hmm. It is Jackie Heinricher, Catherine Lake. Yeah. Uh, Simona de Silvestra and Bea, oh, I cannot pronounce her name, but it's a actually Anna Beatrice. Yes. Because um, apparently in wherever Anna is from, there's like some famous actress with the same name. There is, actually. So um, and and she actually goes by Bea because it's Anna Beatrice. Like, that's her Full. first and middle name. Mm -hmm. And so her nickname is Bea. Yeah. Like Beatrice. And then... Um, the last two are family names because that's how, that's how they do Spanish things. speaking, yeah, yeah, and Portuguese speaking countries. And do I was that. like, I'm not gonna mispronounce her. Yeah, name. what is her? I actually can't read my handwriting. It looks like it's uh, Fierro. Yeah, because there there's go. like yeah. an R and an E and a yeah, D and the O, yeah. but my handwriting ran together. Via, when I was... via Fierro. There you go. Perfect. I'm like, because I know I read that earlier this yeah. week. Um, sponsored by Caterpillar. Love it. Which. I, I can, I, somebody had the mock-up of the livery for the car, and I was like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. I'm here. Also, Catherine Leg, Cat Leg, Caterpillar, yeah. Cat. Well, and Caterpillar provides, um, you know, construction equipment, which is such a very male-dominated thing, and so for them just to, to be a sponsor of an all-women's team, I love it. I know, it is amazing. I love it. So all four of them will be driving um, during the Daytona in 2019. All of them, except for Simona, will be handling the rest of the World Endurance Championship, and they're hoping to do Le Mans. Excellent. So I was like, oh, shit. That's awesome. How can we get to Le Mans? Right? Because I, 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 I want to go. Who wants to sponsor us to go to Le Mans? Like, I, I want to go anyway, but this is one of those moments where we need to go, so. Mm -hmm. I, I take so this. So if you've got disposable income. And I want to help us go to Le Mans. You just let us know. Please. We will happily, uh, we'll even interview you. Yeah. Okay. You throw enough money at us, you can get an interview on the show. That's, that's a level of our non-existent Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> we will interview you. We sure will. Oh, all right. Now yeah. to the, uh, the bullshit news. That happened literally a day before the Michael Shank racing yeah. announcement. Like the timing... I feel like Emma's always like, okay, but hold my beer. Yeah. Like, they, it was a hold my beer moment. It totally was. He was like, oh, let me show you how you actually support female racers. Let me show you something about you, you that, that you, you don't, don't know. know. That's what happened. So, the W Series, which is the series that Pippa Mann had, had spoken out about, um... A little over a year ago. Um, last it, summer. Like yeah, it was last about June. June, yeah. Sorry. And, you know, the series hadn't been named, and there were some names that, you know, she wouldn't even mention because yeah. they were so patronizing. And anyhow, and she let it, God and everybody know that she was displeased with the suggestion, and a lot of us agreed with her. Yeah. And um, they went ahead and did it anyway. <clears throat> yeah, they because there was that time. It cropped up momentarily again. And then kind of But then it went back down, because like a few weeks, I think a few months ago, we were like, kid, we've not... We've not heard anything like, eh. 
So, but uh, but yep, they now did we it. Do. So the W series, which the W series, what is this like the WCW or something? Isn't that the what's the there's like a TV channel that used to be the W. Oh, and it had like um, I don't remember it, and I don't have cable anymore, so it's a lot harder. But it then, was it was like more ridiculous than uh, Lifetime. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Really, Mr. Gandal. So it was the Oxygen Channel. Was that it? No, it really was the W. The W. The something? CW. I'm sorry, it's the CW. Oh well, that's not. It's not ridiculous, but it just reminds me of a TV oh, channel you when you gotcha. call it like the W series. The W series, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it just. I mean, it's max of W. Uh, all right, let's let's. I don't. Let's start with the facts. So it's a open seating. So it's an open seat racing, single seat. I'm sorry, open wheel racing. Yes. All female. Apparently, it's quote free to enter. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, eighteen members right now that. It's considered a support series for DTM, only mm-hmm. in Europe. Yeah. Winner. So the the pot is, I believe, one point five million, and the winner of the championship will get uh, five hundred thousand. Of the whole championship. Of the way. whole championship, by the way, and then everybody else I, I, gets. I, a I cut. just want to remind everybody that James Davison, who was first out in the Indianapolis five hundred on lap seven. <laughs> Um, his pot was over three hundred thirty thousand dollars. So, so their their championship money for the entire season, mm-hmm. um, five hundred thousand dollars, which is great because that's not enough to finance a career anywhere. So, if you win the shootout to get into, I I double check these numbers because I was like, the fuck does our series do? Our ladder series, you win the shootout, two hundred thousand dollars. You win USF two thousand, get three three hundred twenty five thousand. That's the year end award. That's not counting the money that you get winning races. And there's like auxiliary awards that you can also pick up. This is just Absolutely. that scholarship amount. Yeah. So that's the USF two thousand to then turn around and fund your Pro Mazda. You win at Pro Mazda, it's seven thousand seven seven hundred ninety thousand dollars. So yep. you're already over their yeah. poultry amount. And then of course Indy Lights is one million, and that's three races including the five hundred. Yep. So yeah, five hundred thousand dollars for and and no guaranteed races anywhere else. Yeah, like nobody's saying that this will then leverage you into something else, like the Road to Indy does. I I'm assuming I'm not sure, but like the NASCAR ladder also does a similar thing. Mm-hmm. Formula ladder seems to feel that way, but they've got like fourteen extra steps. They do. Yeah, they have They're a lot like, of extra I things. Don't know. Which it's funny that they're technically a feeder series for DTM because they keep advertising that this is a way to get. Uh, women, into women into F1. Well, and DTM isn't an open wheel racing series. That's no. what that's what kills me is I'm sure that all open wheel racing just went, no, thank you. Yeah. I mean, I can't say that for certainty, but if they're like. So yeah. here's, here's, mm-hmm. here's the only thing that makes sense to me about this uh, because it's all bass awkward. Oh yeah. You're, you're feeding into a series. You're an open wheel series that feeds into a non open wheel series. Actual open wheel series. Think you're bullshit. Mm-hmm. Because they don't want anybody who gets special treatment. And the women in those series don't want special treatment. Yeah. Okay? That It's, it's one of the few areas where you can actually compete equally regardless mm-hmm. of your gender. And we like it that way. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. Men, women, racers, spectators. We fucking love it that way. Um, so actual open wheel series... You're fine. Calling bullshit. And all of this, that it makes no sense, and it's just Mm -hmm. a bad idea. What makes sense about it is, this was Bernie Ecclestone's love child for female racers. So the fact that it actually works against you trying to get into a real series is because Bernie's behind this. Yeah, 100%. He doesn't want to see women succeed. That man Mm -hmm. is a fucking misogynist. Oh my God, yes. If I met him, I would spit in his face. Openly. Openly. Knowing that it was a battery, I would spit in his face. Yeah. Yes. In front of cameras. Yeah. And there would be a, I mean, first of all, if I'm going to go big. Yeah. I think there's going to be a record. Well, damn right. <laughs> Better video it. But, ugh. I, yeah. All right. We're all angry and just hitting our microphones. I know. Any, any more facts? Um, those were the only facts about it. Obviously, a lot of people have discussed it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, Rob Howden had a very good article that we retweeted talking about how if you want to do this, start at the carding level. Exactly. And he, I mean, read that was it. An excellent article. It's an excellent article. He really broke it down. Like this is where the disparity is starting to happen. It's like at that it beginning starts level. young. Yeah. yeah. And it just it only goes down from there. And mm-hmm. so, you know, there aren't more women in racing because they don't start in racing because we're not encouraging young girls to go into that. Yeah. We're reaching a point where we're encouraging, you know, girls and young women to, you know, go into STEM and all that business. And that needs to extend into the racing world because it really falls under the same, you know, branch. Because all of all of those things in STEM I mean factor into racing. Your cat is being ridiculous. I know. Right I it's I, it's so funny. He's, He's sitting in my lap like I'm Marlon Brando in The Godfather. <laughs> it is like I I'm gonna just we're gonna have to tweet this out. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, cause you're fine. I like that my cat posed too. He's like Norman. He did well Whoa. done. Well Picture. done, Gandalf. Anyway, <laughs> back to this. Back to um, yeah. No, I think uh, yeah. I mean, so. I was thinking almost something like what what really needs to happen is there needs to be almost like this this mentorship of people who are women who are really uh, I think there's an organization that's supposed to be doing that but they're not well there's a few things that are happening so Formula One actually has like a women's program they just did their first um, kind of weekend and so it brought like 17 or 18 women of different um, backgrounds together because I know like Natalie Decker was part of it, Tatiana Calderon, and so like that's NASCAR and Formula One. Well, to put them all together, I think that's a good idea because it's almost like creating an alliance. Yeah, and that's part of how women will will be better. Yeah, because sure the the sport is open and allows women to come in, but it's still kind of a men's sport. You need those women there to be like, yeah, this happened. I mean, like that's oh, cool. absolutely. Yeah. No. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, there is, there's definitely a difference being a, a female racer than a male racer. Um, but, but yeah, but there's not, I mean, blatant no. sexism, no. you know, it's not, it's, it's a lot easier now to be in racing as a woman than it was when Janet Guthrie was running oh, the 500, God, yeah. Yeah. you know? And so, you know, a lot of that has kind of changed, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's like the, the mentorship that mm-hmm. needs to happen. Cause I mean, even male racers have said that it's a nice when an older guy takes you under their yeah. wing just to kind of show you the ropes and say, Hey, you know, don't let them put that in your contract. That's a bad thing. Or, hey, you know, this and that it's, I mean, yeah, you started any new job you know, or your first job out of college, you don't know anything. It's nice to have somebody who knows what the fuck they're doing, who can give you a heads up, let you know, Hey, this is, you know, this is important. This is not, this is how things actually happen here. And yeah. So, but yeah, they need to start at the carding level. That article is fantastic. And it was really good. Yeah. Um, And And a mentorship thing I think is an excellent scholarships for women. I mean, yeah, that's part of it. Well, and there need to be we need, I wish we had more sponsors and businesses that yeah. made a point to say, I want to sponsor a female racer. Right? Because it happened, like, for, well, I'd love for that to happen. You know, people would throw a fucking bitch fit. Sorry, excuse my French, but why are they only supporting women? Da, da, da. You know what? Look here. Because it's harder for them to get sponsorship. Because it's harder for money. them to get sponsorship. And I'm tired of people being cranky when things happen that way. Yeah. Because there was something similar for, like, female sports journalists. They're like, you know, we're trying to create an opportunity for a female sports journalist, you know, here's your scholarship. And people are like, well, why can't men apply? Because you guys could get into locker rooms a lot easier than women can. So sit down and shut yeah, up. Yeah, because like, everybody assumes you know your shit when it comes to sports. I mean, we run into that. We have to know the physics of the car and know everything that happened in the race and be able to defend our point of view mm-hmm. to the nth degree. Like we designed the, the track and the car, and, the car yeah. and like we were actually in the pit box. But at the same time, I had to get my nails fucking done the whole month of May so that I looked <laughs> womanly enough. So, so what is it? Yeah, it, I mean, it, it's quite the uh, the dichotomy that that we have to face as women when you're when you're in an area that's mostly men. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we'll see. I would say yeah, and I guess that does fall under special treatment, but mm-hmm. not in the not in the way of like separating us from everybody else. Right. It's more. It's what. Oh God. I can't think of the word. It's been a long day at work, but it's it's not equality. It's equity. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? It, it that's just it. Like, sorry, but if you've had the history that that women and minorities have had, then yeah, you'd understand. And some you don't, and that's fine. Yeah. But shut up. <laughs> but on this, we're gonna have to politely ask you to shut the fuck up. Two.
please see yourself out. So we'll see what happens. We'll right? see what happens. I hope that it actually does give them a leg up and that hey, it's not the bullshit that I think it's going to be. If it I would works love that. and women are suddenly coming from this series into other series, I would I will eat crow and be happy about it. Yeah. That's fine. I, I will be happy about it. I don't think it's going to work. But- I don't think so either. And I don't know who you think is going to watch these races. Um, I mean, I will watch out of curiosity, although part of me doesn't really want to support the series because I think it's bullshit, but yeah. I also do want to support the the women who are racing in it. And I sure. also want to echo what Pippa said, which is that just because I think the series is bullshit, yeah. I'm not going to shit on anybody who's in the series because that That's, might be that their only right, like financial I, option. I don't know your background. <clears throat> if this is what you have to do to do it, then, you right. know. It's the same reason I don't, I don't shit on grid girls like a lot of strong women mm-hmm. do. And it's because, listen, if live that's what life. you want to do, like the, live your life. However you want to earn your paycheck, that's up to you. Yeah. It's not for me to tell you what to do. No. So anyhow, we'll be clear about that. Um, but yeah, if it, if it actually works, uh, if it works, fantastic. fantastic. But like, I'll watch it, you know, out of curiosity. But have you seen the disparity in the numbers between the NBA and the WNBA? Mm-hmm. Who in the actual fuck do you think is going to watch this series? Well, first of all, unless you make it a sideshow, which is also another stellar option that mm-hmm. you're, you're what, like how they have the, the skimpy cheerleaders at the WNBA games. Really? 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 But really. Um, and, and again, nothing against cheerleaders. They're, no. they're fantastic athletes. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. Um, I and if I buy those bodies, I dress like that too. Right? So I mean, no judgment. Can I do a flip? No. But you're doing it to get fans to come because you don't actually think the sport stands on its own. Mm-hmm. It it will be interesting to see. I hope it doesn't devolve into what like type a, of a, a, a sideshow freak show kind of. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. It's in Europe right now. They're thinking if it survives into the next season or two, they'd like to have races in America. So we'll see. Okay. <laughs> okay. But uh, I don't know. I am. Um... I hate that it's true, but I, I don't believe that Americans are, are very pro all female sports. No. No. I mean, I, I think that that's... I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Exhibit A, the WNBA. The WNBA, like, which has amazing athletes yeah, in it. Like, they are amazing people. I mean, because I'll watch a Fever game every now and then, but let's be real. Most people are going to watch the NBA over the WNBA. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm sure that this series is, given the scheduling, going to conflict with all the other schedule or all the other series. So, yeah, it's not. I mean, we we have a lot of races here in the States. Yeah. Like, okay, but when are you going to? Yeah. When are you going to have these races? And what's your what's your target demographic is going to be fellow open wheel fans like I would not bring it on. Yeah. Very interesting. So I'm just going to mutter darkly about that for a minute. That's fine. So we'll, we'll keep you posted as uh, more information comes out and we'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah. We will wait and see. <laughs> and then um, we will very publicly eat crow. Yeah. If we're wrong. I don't mind. Nope. We'll do it. We'll admit when we're wrong. Hey, it's easy for me to admit when I'm wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's my answer to everything. Who won the 14, the 19, you know, 45 Indianapolis 500. Yeah. I don't know. Not important, but we get asked that question sometimes. We do. But I'm, anyway. What am, I'm not Google. Right? Google it. Right. I'm not A, I'm not Donald Davidson. B, I'm not Google. <laughs> I've interviewed the man. He's adorable, but I am not him. No, I'm not. <laughs> At all. <laughs> all right. Well, let's run through our motor, motorsports pit stop. All right. I'll, I'll do NASCAR because I had to write the standings down earlier today because it was not up last night. Gotcha. So NASCAR, they were at Talladega 2, Electric Boogaloo. No, they were, which by the way, Talladega Motor Speedway, um, check out their Twitter (laughs) because this afternoon has been nothing but hilarity. Oh, we we tweeted the shit. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I I, I saw that you got it from ours, so I did it for my personal. It's great. Um, They have been tweeting photos of all the things left in the infield camping. And oh my god, they start out with a couch. Which there's a. I mean, can we really judge the? No, couch? no, no, no. Well, although that was like a sectional, <laughs> yeah, like a leather nice... sectional. Hey guys, if you're listening, when we go day, day, to Daytona, they had a sectional there, so I feel like we got to step it up next year. Yeah, like it looks like part of it reclined. I don't... Like I want a day bed next year. <laughs> 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 I list and find... No, don't bring a day no, bed. No, 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 no. 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 
Um, but yeah, and then they, there was just a random mattress on the ground. Yeah. With some like leftover food and like muffins and like hamburger buns and shit that somebody just left. And then my favorite was a collection of uh, bedding. Yeah. And it was like bedding set, lightly used, nice pattern. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think lightly used would be the term I would choose, but, oh, but, but it's been fantastic. But but way to go, Talladega like, Motor Speedway. That's what you do. Because that was hysterical. <laughs> that was. Um, so speaking of Talladega, Eric, Eric with an A, Amarola in the Ford one. That's his first NASCAR race. All right. Um, Clint Boyer came in second, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. in third. So currently the standings are Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Logano. They are at Kansas 2 uh, next week. And um, Casey Kane, who won the Brickyard last year, uh-huh. he retired. He was going to retire at the end of the season, but I guess he's been having issues with dehydration and, like, weird body temperature issues. So he just, like, stopped. Interesting. Yeah. Well, and if you remember, he really suffered from dehydration after last year's Brickyard because it was eight hours in length. Yeah, the longest Brickyard on record. And... One of the hottest. Yeah. And I think ever since then, maybe not ever since then, but he's been really suffering with dehydration and whatnot. Interesting. And so, well, and you know, if he had like an acute kidney injury, like once you're... Once yeah. you're... I mean, you can have something that, that damages your kidneys to the point that they're more sensitive. And so, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, so... Oh, I always liked Casey Kane. Yeah, he's nice. I like that name. That was one of the few. Uh, actually, I bought a Casey Kane hoodie or a <laughs> sweatshirt. It wasn't a hoodie, but a sweatshirt. Um, the the first Brickyard race I went to. Yeah. It was right after Talladega Nights came out, and there was a free ticket, so I got a Talladega Nights shirt because they had a holler there. Yeah. So I have a shirt that says I want to go fast. Obviously. Naturally. Naturally. And um, and then I bought a Casey Kane shirt. Because. Um, well, cause it was black and red and, um, he would drove a Dodge at the time. So it has the Dodge symbol. Oh, on it. nice. Yeah. I'm a big Chrysler Dodge fan. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and my uncle Phil's, uh, my uncle Phil's wife, Vicky, uh, knows, knows his family actually. So yeah, yeah. I was like, Ooh, Casey Kane. I was like, and I like that sweatshirt. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, I was so like, that's... somebody I know knows you. I'll take it. So that's NASCAR formula one. We had no race this past weekend. Uh, we are heading into the U S Grand Prix in Coda. All right. So that'll be interesting. I won't. I, I might take a peek at it just to see how Coda goes. Yeah. Formula One. Um, there's a possibility that they could. I somehow mathematically, I don't know where he would place, but Lewis Hamilton can actually clinch the championship. Interesting. So we'll see. All or right. we won't see. We will or we won't. One of the two. Yeah. NHRA, the Carolina Nationals. <laughs> I mean, I feel like. I feel like that's just an oxymoron. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> Steve Torrance won in Top Fuel. And, uh, spoiler alert, he's also the leader in the Top Fuel yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, Ron Caps won in Funny Car. And Jason Line won in Pro Stock. Mm-hmm. Uh, leader in Funny Car is currently Robert Height. And the leader in Pro Stock is currently Tanner Gray. Yeah. Uh, their next race, <laughs> the Toyota Nationals. <laughs> I mean. October 28th. Where where are they? I didn't write that down. <laughs> Toyota. They could be anywhere. They are in Toyota. Doubt it. No, I don't think that's <laughs> yeah. a real place. No. I don't know. It's just called the Toyota National. I don't know. Maybe it's a place in Japan. I, I, don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. the NHRA. I don't know where the name of that car came from. <laughs> I think it is. I don't know. It could be. It could it be. Sounds like it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, it's a Japanese name. Could be. I don't Sounds know. Right. Yeah. All right. EMSA, we have the Petit Le Mans. Yeah, down in Atlanta. Road Atlanta. All of everybody else we knew went there. Not us. Not us. Well, we, we did not go. I did not. In fact, I had a weekend off. I had the house to myself. Oh, very nice. And uh, I enjoyed doing n- not, not much of anything. I really got to recharge. It was very nice. Good. Felt like a new person. <laughs> okay. I did. Yeah. You got a new couch. I did get it. Well, it's a new old couch. I mean, new it's to new you. It's new to me. Well, not really, because I well, yeah. spent You've many a night sleeping on that True. Too. But I got a couch. Another couch. Good weekend for you. And cats really enjoy it. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Anyway. So, the results. All right. Um, DPI. Daytona prototype. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm like, you can't put initials in here without a key for me. Well, that's the IMSA stuff. You go to a few IMSAs? I know, but I don't know all of them. Okay, so the Daytona prototype. Yes. 
All right. Um, so the winner was Cadillac, mm-hmm. Jay Taylor, RHR, and Vanderzond. RHRR. Woo! Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, he is. Hey, he's having quite the year. He's kind of a sneaky sneak. Yeah, he's like, having. You don't think about Ryan Hunter Ray and then. Surprise. Ryan. Right? Unless his kids are FaceTiming him and then they hang up on him. Oh my God. Which is still funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. He was like, okay, I guess we're done. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Oh. He was like, I'm sorry. I was like, we're like, no, go ahead and take it from take your kids. kids. That's adorable. It's kind of a big deal. And he was like, hey, uh, nope. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, let's see. The Mazda DPI was second and third, but the third Mazda had Spencer Pickett. <laughs> yes. And we retweeted a fantastic photo of his teammates when they realized that he was, that their car was coming in third. Yeah. So. It was really nice. Yeah. Get it, pig it. Oh, I like that. Right? Ooh. Somebody right. should put that on a shirt. Hey, Ed, put that on a shirt. Get yeah. it, pig it. Get it. Get it, pig it. Get it, pig it. Oh, my God. We're making signs for Daytona if he shows up. Oh, yeah. Wasn't he at Daytona last year? He was, so I'm sure he'll be there. Oh, yeah. Get it, pig it. Get it, pig it. I'm just going to start yelling at whenever I see him. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We shouldn't, but we'll teach Doug that. And yes. then... Yeah. Well, I like yeah. that you said we'll teach him that like he's a dog. Well, if he's drunk, sometimes it takes <laughs> some positive re- reinforcement, <laughs> some re- repetition. Yeah. Yeah. We, we can make this happen. He'll yell at a Daytona for us. And <laughs> at every Indy car race. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Pansky boys. Yeah. Not as great. Yeah. Um. Castro Neves, uh, R. Taylor, and Ray Hall, the game in fifth. Yeah. And then Montoya, Cameron, and Pagano, um, they were 32nd overall. Yeah, that's not... I, I didn't really look into that. I'm sure they just didn't do well. Yeah. Um, let's see. Gabby Chavez was also driving. He was part of the Cadillac DPI. They came in eighth, but they did clinch um, overall winner of the whole IMSA series. So. Well, that's awesome. That's nice for Gabby. That really is. <laughs> to be a part of something. Since he's, since we don't know he's what been exactly kicked out of his car. Yeah, Gabby. I don't even know that Gabby knows what's going on, but he's flying drones under the hand uh, under the handle cannonball. cannonball. So <laughs> that's a call sign. Cannonball Chavez. Cannonball Chavez. Uh, All right, and then you uh, let's see. Dixon was in the Ford GT, mm-hmm. and they were 16th overall. And then Bourdais was in a Ford GT, and he was his team was 18th overall. Yeah, kind of always like to. Shout Feature our IndyCar car guys. Indy cars. Yeah. I only I think I only went so far down and then I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I don't I don't need to look up anymore. No, it's like that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. I don't think anymore we're there. No. So WC was had the uh, six hours of Fuji. Yes. Which that would be such a cool race to go to. It would be. Yeah. I also would like to see Fuji. So Yeah. Same. So I'm like, uh, two birds, one stone. Okay. I know. I was looking at the website for like my scuba cruise that I did, and they yeah. have a cruise, the British Virgin Islands, which I was like, okay, cool. And then they have um, two in Indonesia and one in the Philippines. Mm. And they're definitely more expensive, but I was like, uh, mm. one of these years, yes. I'm doing that. Wait. And one of them is like a huge boat with like private bathrooms. And because the one that I do is. Right, like it's basically Rom, like yeah, yeah, it's like camping but on a boat. It's yeah, it's pretty earthy. It's not for everybody. Sure, but yeah, they've got two higher level ones. But yeah, but the other the other fleets are all just the higher level, so they're all super nice and super yachts. Yeah, basically, I mean, one of them's like a hundred and fifty feet long or something. Like it's yeah. huge. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's a uh, it's beautiful over there. So. I'm I'm about it. Yeah. No, I'm it's definitely one of the places I want to go. Oh, definitely. I also have to spoiler alert, I have to get my passport this summer, this winter, so we can go to Toronto. <laughs> I need to send in my paperwork to Canada, so it's fine. So, okay. Well, I don't feel as bad. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. All right. That makes me feel a bit better. Yeah, no. I, I don't have clearance from the government yet, <laughs> so you're fine on the passport. You can always expedite it, trust me. You can get it in I mean two you can weeks. like walk through up in Detroit, you can do a walk through. Without a passport? No, no, no. Oh. You can walk your passport through in Detroit. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't really. I just, no, thank you. Unless <laughs> we can tie that into the Detroit race. <laughs> <laughs> 
drop off the passport, see Ray's, pick up the passport, go home. Yeah. I'd like to have it before then, though. Yeah. Yeah. Just. But the know. expediting, you, I mean, get it, you get it back pretty quick. I mean, I I'll If get you it needed to. Yeah. So, all right. But yeah. Okay. WC. Um, the results, Toyota. Um, let's see. They won both first place and second place. Yes. So first place, uh, Kobayashi, Conway, and Lopex. Second place, Alonzo, Nakajima, and Buemi. So Alonzo won second. And this nice. was the Fuji that they had to move because I think it was it was supposed to be this upcoming weekend, which conflicted with the U.S. Grand Prix. And so they moved Fuji. So oh yeah, remember so, so that... Alonzo can run both. Yep. Also, apparently, um, Kiego Ihara, who we had as our woman of the week back in July. Yeah, before, mm-hmm. like, the string of races. She yeah. also raced. Oh, that's awesome. I wasn't quite sure. It was a weird website to figure out how she did, but she did okay. That's so that awesome. was exciting. That is very cool. Mm-hmm. Good for her. That's our very long motorsports pit stop, because everybody's it in is. their championship contention, so shit's afoot. Shit is afoot. <laughs> Things are getting the- squirrely. Everybody else is awesome in their silly season, and I was like, I'm not even going to. Right. The Le Mans race, the Petit Le Mans like the last two or three laps, like whoever was leading it ran out of fuel. Yeah. They had to dip in for fuel and everybody was like, what? And I was like, it was That's crazy. That's why endurance races are so much fun to watch. Yes. Because you literally never know what's going to happen. Right. Cause you can be like, Oh, this guy's going to win. in like the, like the last corner car blows up. Yeah. I mean, maybe it doesn't blow up, but yeah, but something blows up. Yeah. A tire engine done. Then the engine just says, and out. Right. Engine seizes up. Yeah. Run out of fuel. Blow a head gasket. Apparently they tried to pull a Rossi. It did not work out. <laughs> Worked out for our HR, though. I don't know if he was sure driving did. or not. He was like, no, no, no. This is what we do. He's like, no, I drive for Andretti. This is kind of our thing. This is our this is our deal. This is okay. our move. This is our this is our bread and butter move. Right. We're gonna nurse that fuel mileage. Say bread and butter to say bread and butter ball. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's how Ryan has to say it contractually. Yeah. Every time he says butter, he has to add ball. Butterball. Oh, it's Thanksgiving we'll time soon. We'll be seeing butterball turkeys everywhere. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do something funny, like <laughs> Oh, there's gonna put, be some put, memes. Yeah, RHR's face on so many say, turkeys. So many turkeys. Yeah, if with you, his head. If you cook a turkey for Thanksgiving, print out a picture of Ryan Hunter Ray. Put his face on it and tweet it at us. Please. We will retweet it. I think this needs to do, we need to do this. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, um. Hashtag it. If you have the best one, we'll mail you a shirt. Sure. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Oh, God. We just did something. All right. Yeah, I like this. I'm going to write this down. So hashtag Butterball Ryan. I mean, I don't know. We'll, we'll think about the hashtag. Just start tweeting. Well, we well, got a little bit. We got some time. We're going to refine this idea, but, uh, but yeah, but heads whoever up. has the funniest Turkey picture with uh, Ryan Hunter Ray. Yeah. You get a free shirt. <laughs> you get a free shirt. You get a free shirt. Maybe don't tag. Uh, no, you know what? Go ahead and tag both of us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. This will be fun. I'm um, excited about this. I am too. And uh, if you're wondering where you can tag us, you can actually do it on any of our social media platforms. <laughs> We're on Facebook, www.facebook.com slash fast cars, fast girls. Or you can simply search fast cars, fast girls in the search bar of your Facebook page. We're on Instagram at fast cars, fast girls. And we're on Twitter at fast cars in three one seven. We do have a Snapchat that is only active when we are at race weekends. Um, so you got until January. Yep. Yeah. Well, no, it'll be active for uh, lights, lights of the brick, brickyard. Liquor and lights. Liquor yeah. And lights. lights of the brickyard. I know. I was gonna. I was thinking for the uh, the prize for the last thing. Like, ooh, maybe we'll give away a pass for liquor and lights. And I was like, I don't have that kind of fucking money. No. I'm trying to move right now. <laughs> Those speedy passes are pricey. Which buy them now, by the way, yeah. because uh, the price goes up. You can. I, I need to double check. Can you just buy like a general speedy pass? You have to reserve a speedy pass for like a certain date. No, you can buy a general. Okay. So yeah. otherwise, I was like, we need to get this planned. Yeah, no, we really do. Because you went a bunch of times last year, and we do need to get it done. Um, but I think we have until November 1st I think before so. the first price increase, and then it goes up again. But yeah, if we buy them all now, then it doesn't matter when we go. It's yeah. all still cheap. Perfect. So, yeah. So we will buy all um, of them. But yeah. Um, and you can also find everything you need to know on our website, mm-hmm. www.fastcarsfastgirls.com. 
Obviously, you're listening to us on one of your favorite podcast platforms, but you can find us on all of the other ones. Yes. Make sure that you share us with your friends and family, your coworkers, people you hate. We don't, we don't really care. We just we just want the uh, the downloads. And uh, if you're listening to us, please give us a like, a rate, and review. We really appreciate it. If you've got any suggestions, um, things you'd like to hear about in the off season, yeah. we want to hear it. There's a place on our website where you can hit contact us, and you, um, it'll email us, and you can ask a question or you know suggest a topic for the show. Just because you know we did a lot of kind of you know nitty gritty learning stuff last winter, We're gonna have um, a and fun and we it. enjoy that. So if there's something you want to know more about or have questions about. Let us know. We, we also it. enjoy uh, featuring some listener questions, which we've got a great listener question again for this week. So make sure you let us know uh, those as well. And you can do that on any of our social media or on the website. Actually, we just got one on Instagram. Oh, we just we got another one. We, we're not going to answer it today because um, it's actually going to take some That's creepy. Research. Are they sitting in your bushes? Well, no, I put something on Instagram that was like, hey, let us know if you have any thoughts. And so somebody sent us something. So Excellent. So it can happen in live time, but we will not answer it in real time unless it's something we can both answer real quickly. But this one, yes. I like it. It's going to take some work, working. It is. So stay tuned. Stay. Our, um, and, and it was an excellent, yeah. excellent question. And we asked it on our Facebook page, too. And I've got a lot of responses. Sure did. A lot of people really enjoyed this question. I'm enjoying seeing all the answers. So yeah. make sure that you jump in and be a part of the fun. Please do. Um, it was Donnie from Twitter. Um, there had been some talk about a possible throwback livery race, kind of like how NASCAR does at Darlington. What throwback liveries would you like to see if this were to happen? And the bonus question is, what track should host it? Yeah. So what do you think? Well, I think if you're going to do a throwback, it's got to be at, it's got to be at an old track. And so for me, mm -hmm. it's the IMS. Mm -hmm. It's the Indy 500. Um, you want to make that race a throwback? Uh, See, I thought more of the GP. And now, I, and somebody had said the GP, and I enjoyed that because it's like got parts of IMS, but a little different. Well, and also it'd be hard to do a throwback for the that's, Indy 500 kinda... because, you know, there's 33 drivers and not all of them are going to have like throwback liveries and things. But I mean, without, yeah. Yeah. You know, have the all history to like do standing. a throwback of, but yeah. It would be cool to see a shit ton of throwback liveries on new cars that would be cool. at the IMS for the Indy 500. Like, yeah. I just feel like that would be cool. Like when, you know, for the 100th, when they, when they had brought all out all the, the old race cars, yes. it's like, it's just cool at a place with that much history. Like, I that's, that. yeah, that's pretty badass. Um, Pocono, I think would be a great place to do throwbacks. Pocono would be a good one. Yeah. I, I was thinking IndyCar GP. Um, at yep. the IMS A because it's more of a festival type yeah. feeling and I think it'd be a fun way to kick off May it would and I think it generates some more interest in it yeah I I did I did try and think well maybe Bomberito because it's like a, a Midwestern hub so a lot of people could come to it yeah or Kohler Road America I feel like that uh, would really feel good Road, Road America. America yeah you could definitely do a throwback at Road America I feel I don't know something about like I think it would just fit with the vibe of the whole weekend yeah like, I would feel like I would need to dress nicer. Right? Like, it, you can almost theme it out then. At that point, you're like, everybody find your vintage shit. Like, yeah. Like, I would totally be wearing some cat eye. Oh, yeah. You yeah. go, like, full. Yes. Yeah. You'd think I was going to the Kentucky Derby. Chick would not, though. <laughs> no. 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 Not even a little. No. He would go, mm -mm. No. But, uh, but, yeah. What about liveries? Ooh, now see that one's that one's hard because there's so many cool older I ones. Know. I couldn't stick to one, so you're fine. I know. I really, I really couldn't pick a favorite. Yeah. Um, well, a couple. I I had a couple written down, so that's fine. Um, see, I mean, I enjoy like, um, I don't remember whose livery it was, but it was the <laughs> the old Marlboro livery. Yeah, those are always good. Because I think Pinsky did that. I think yeah, I think it was Pinsky, and there was one where it's like that was. It, it seemed like it was the only sponsor. <laughs> and what I enjoyed about it is like the car was white with some like red trim and it said Marlboro and it basically looks like the side it of a carton like of cigarettes. Of, yes. And so that to me, I know the cigarettes are bad for you. Um, Which but, is why the cigarette money went away. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, that one I enjoy because yeah. it's like they made that car look like their product and it's really fucking hard to make a race car look like your product. <laughs> So, really but it's cool. like, it looks like the side of a carton of cigarettes. That one's a good one. Yeah. Which ones do you have? Um, the STP livery only because Ooh. the crew outfit. 
God, I love the STP. That would have to happen. Mm -hmm. And then I thought, you know, if we're going to go, like, throwback, if somebody can make a livery that somehow harkens back to the old Marmon Wasp, yeah, I'd be here for it. And finally, <laughs> only because, well, you'll know why, the Indiana Jones livery. Damn right. That Marco drove for a bit. Like, I loved that livery. I also love Harrison Ford, but like that livery was cool. And like his race suit looked like Indiana Jones. Yeah, that was super cool. That was super cool. It really was. I don't know that it's been enough for that to be like a throwback. I know, like it's a vague Yeah. Throwback. Well, although those movies are older. The, yeah. the movies are older than the livery, so I feel like we go with the movie date. Yeah, I feel like that's what we could do. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know, no, but that if, was like, fun. If Zach Beach drove it, he would not know. Well, everybody knows who Indiana Jones is, but it would feel more appropriate if a younger driver handled it. Yeah. <laughs> God, Zach Beach is Indiana Jones. <laughs> uh, that would be oh, hilarious. That would be hilarious. Yeah, it would be very funny. So that but, was fun. But yeah, no, the SDP is good. The SDP. Um, yeah, there's so many like. I mean, the cigarette ones are always Pennzoil ones. Yeah. Like, and even, like, pre-Alio. Yeah, like the old school Like, there's ones. old school 90s ones, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm trying to, there were so many, so many different sponsors. That's why, like, I feel like it would be something fun to do. Except John Menards. He is invested in racing, and People I'm invested know. in his stores. Hey, I was at Menards getting all of the shit to clean my garage. Okay. Damn right you were. I was like, I'm a support, Simon. And Menards, mm -hmm. I'm gonna support our sponsors. Absolutely, that's what you got to do. That's I love I, I I love Menards liveries, but only because that yellow is just so obnoxious, and I I'm so into it. No, I'm here for. I'm you like a moth it. to a flame. I love it. Yeah, that's why I also like the bright green fuzzy liveries too. Mm -hmm. Like you can just point. There they are. There they are. Yeah. There they are. Found it. Right. It's like where's Waldo? There. I have found Simon. <laughs> only it's like. Where's Waldo? Where Waldo's already circled. <laughs> that's that's the skill level. True, there. The real where's Waldo is. Can you tell the difference between Joseph and Will's car? Yeah. No. Which silver Verizon car is it? <laughs> so that was. I fun. can't tell. Has the driver peed his pants yet? <laughs> is it red or black? I don't know. It's moving too fast. Oh, so. So that was our listener question. That was our that listener was question. So let us know again. We did post it on our Facebook page. So jump on over. Yeah, join the conversation. Ta -da. There's a lot, a lot of good comments on there. A lot of good things going on. All right, next up, our women, woman of the week. Yeah, and I did not schedule her to have said stuff when I first put her down as our woman of the week. Like, I cut a few of her little caustic comments, but take a minute and look her up after you guys are done listening to us. You cut some of her comments. I did. <clears throat> They just seemed real pointed at Carmen Jordan, and I was like, I'm going to let the group Google her. Okay. Fair enough. Basically, she was like, you're an idiot, and you suck <laughs> as a driver, and I'm sorry. I'm saying, she started driving a, a while ago. Yeah. It's not, it's not like she's young and like no. having a cat fight. No. No, no, she, no this is... She, she's older than us, and she's giving her the business. She's giving... So it's Ellen Lore. Ellen Lore. <laughs> And uh, that's E-L-L-E-N-L-O-H-R, yes. for those of you who are going to Google. Yes, please Google her. Yeah. Um, so in 1987, which is why we said she's not a spring, a, a young lady in a cat fight. She's a feisty broad in a cat fight. She is. She won the German Formula Ford. Yeah, she did. So for that her. was awesome. In 1990, she came in second place um, in the F3 finals in Monaco. Mm -hmm. She came in second in the 24 hours of Nürburgring. Very nice. I appreciated the pronunciation. Thank you. You're welcome. I've actually been practicing that word, <laughs> unbeknownst to you. And had I realized it had that, I would have just paused long enough so that it, so that you said this next section. But I didn't read past Monaco. Uh, but th thank you. I've, I've been working on that. Um, DTM in 1992, she won at um, Hockenheimring Baden-Württemberg. Hockenheimring Baden-Württemberg. You gotta say it quicker. The Germans have no time. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's a joke. That's true. It's no. a joke. No, it's a joke. No, keep going. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, Sarah's in Germany right now. Yeah. Um, she would be, she loves hearing me attempt to pronounce German things. <laughs> it really tickles her. I can imagine. Uh, let's see. In 1994, she came in third place at Diepholz. I don't know. Yeah. Diepholz. 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 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. In 1997, here's something that I didn't know existed. Okay. She was part of the European truck racing series. What? <laughs> There's no hillbillies in Europe. I know. They don't have a need for trucks. I know, but I Googled it. It's real. <laughs> Europe, there was. I don't know how current it is because I just Googled a bunch of all of these facts for her. But yes, the European truck racing, third place at Misano. So, now see, now I want to see that series go up against the NASCAR truck series. I do too. Because that will be a real life Talladega Nights. Yes. Yeah. I need this to happen. Yeah. I need this. Oh, I've lost my pen. I need this to happen. Um, so after competing in the European truck racing series, <laughs> God. <laughs> she then um, did a few years as a rally driver. Um, she was uh, in 2008. She did the Deutsche Rally at Meissenkraft. And then she also did the Central European Rally. And while you are Googling her, give her a follow on the Twitter. It's at Ellen underscore Lore. E-L-L-E-N underscore L-O-H-R. Um, the big significance of Ellen is that she is actually the only woman to have won a DTM race right now. Good for her. So that's that's kind of significant. So, this was actually the one quote I kept of her feisty quotes. <laughs> so, this was... Bef- it better be a good one. It's a good one. All right. This was when people were discussing, again, the whole need for a male or a female-only series because, you know, women just can't compete. She said, we are talking about a sport in which the boys are 1.6 meters tall, which is approximately 5'2 on the mm-hmm. internet. And weigh 55 kilograms or, or approximately about 121 pounds. These are not types with maximum muscle mass. Which she's true. because I believe that I have called them jockeys on more oh, than one occasion. At some point, somebody in the internet meltdown of the W series made a comment that, you know, uh, somebody said, well, women can actually drive better because there's been some studies that show that women withstand G-forces better. Yeah. And the guy was like, well, you should tell that to sumo wrestlers because they're bigger and they and they can do that. And I thought Girl, to myself. Girl, I saw that comment and the only thing that stopped me is that I was on our Twitter. Here's what I'm going to say to people who think that the difference between men and women really is important because men are, be, are able to convey larger muscle mass and whatever. I know for a fact I weigh more than Zach Veach. And Gabby Chavez and probably a dozen other drivers. Yeah. So does that by default mean that I'm a better driver because I'm, I have a larger mass, mass? than they do? No. Yeah. Yeah. Because somebody was like, it was the same. It was the same sumo dipshit. Yeah. He was like e equals mc squared. You know, energy equals. <laughs> yeah. He legit pulled that out, and I, I couldn't. Like my, I know. my, there was smoke coming out of I my just ears, stopped. and I was like, a. This particular equation is irrelevant in this conversation, and you're so ignorant of physics that you don't even know it. So I, I don't have the time to even start and explain to you, like, oh, no, no, that's so dumb. That's so dumb. I'm like, and also, um, a, a body's ability to withstand G-forces has nothing to do with their weight. Actually, um, the amount of G forces you have, can it vary slightly depending on your weight? Yes, Here. because the Here. mass that you have in the car with the, you know, your, your body mass, yeah. it does increase the force and the velocity that you're moving. Yes, I get that. Sure. So, is there going to be a squiggle? Yes, are you going to go from four G's to seven? <laughs> no. Or is a woman only going to be at four G's and you're at seven? No, it's not that. Like, it, it doesn't make that big of a difference. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, God. I saw that too, and I was just like, I, I just fucking flipped, can't. I flipped the phone over. Sometimes I like, I will DM it to my personal account because I'm not done. <laughs> I know. And um, we, I mean, we both do that. Yeah. Uh, but it was one of those days where I was like, mm, mm, no, no. no. I don't have the time nor the crayons to explain how wrong you are. Oh, Jesus God. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're in a sport where they're probably like five to 120 pounds. They're not types of maximum muscle like, mass. This is in the NFL. Okay. It's jockeys. 
You actually have to be smaller and lighter, but yeah, you have to have strength, but you're not running down people in the middle of a field and trying to push them over. Like, it's a whole... Yeah. It, it, yeah. Our, our drivers don't look like fucking linebackers, okay? <laughs> Let's be honest. Yeah. Other than the fact that they're race car drivers, that's the only thing that might keep them in Abby's potential dating pool. But of any active paddock, I would say that <laughs> the size, like, I like tall guys, yeah. and I don't like skinny guys. There's really not a race car driver on the planet that fits the bill. No. No. <laughs> it's so, either one or the other, really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a uh, yeah. Or both, or they're they're neither tall nor well, they're 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 short and skinny. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I I don't I don't, <laughs> I don't like skinny and I don't like short. So, yeah. Oh uh, god. That's a fantastic quote, though. I love that. These are not types of maximum muscle mass. <laughs> I, I mean, really, like Zach Beach is is a gr is a great driver, right. And he's adorable, and I love him. I'd still right. beat him in an arm wrestling. I guarantee that. I might break his fucking arm <laughs> to say, what was on your accident. Mom's and snap him like a chicken bone. Snap him like a chicken bone. <laughs> Actually, oh my gosh! Now that should be a YouTube series. Zach Beach arm wrestles random people. Aw, poor Zach. He's <laughs> all right. He's a good kid. Uh, he is a good kid. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Another quote of hers that I've been in this business for 28 years and really drove anything that has four or six wheels. And the highest level, that's my biggest achievement. I liked that. That was a very positive quote. It is. She's like, you know what? I've gotten out here. I've done my thing. I've driven a lot of different things. I'm here for it. I was like, I understand that. Yeah. That's true mastery of your craft. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Speaking of masters of the craft. It's masters of the craft. Born Racer Review. Oh, my goodness. This has been a while coming. It has been. It has been. So I don't know where to start how to how to start this. Well I just all right, the movie starts out with a black <laughs> screen. I'm sorry. It reminds me of the Parks and Rec episode where the guy holds <laughs> Twilight goes. I will describe it for you now, shot by shot. A deer and he just starts. I'm yes. sorry. <laughs> a deer is drinking softly from a brook. Yes. <laughs> it starts with a black screen. The announcer in the background. From qualifying in the 2017 Indy 500. Oh, even before that, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, even before that. So, so black screen and the white letters come across. And it says, we live to race. There is nothing else. Chip Ganassi. And then it goes black again. And then words pop up again. And the next one. And I just, I wrote this down because I, I enjoyed these no, quotes No, they were good quotes, yeah. Um, and the next one says... It's a race against your fellow competitors, and you're trying to win, but there's so much more going on. Scott Dixon. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know why I said that. It's not a murder mystery. It's not. Um, so that's, that's how they kind of start out with the movie. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I really enjoyed uh, that the producer, Matthew Metcalf, said, um, you know, because we talked to him, and I heard him say this to other people, yeah. and, you know, we were like, you know, what are some things... You know, that you hope the movie gets across and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And, and he said, when you commit to winning, you commit to losing. He said mm -hmm. something that he's realized through doing this documentary, which he's a fellow Kiwi. And um, and he did a documentary on McLaren. And so then he wanted to do one on Scott Dixon. Um, but, yeah, he said, when, when you commit to winning, you commit to losing. And it's how you deal with those losses that mm -hmm. defines the type of competitor you are, the type of racer you are. I, I think that kind of speaks to that bigger overture of this movie which is sort of like this almost duality life like you can win or you can, if you commit to winning you might lose and you will lose you will lose like you know? when you commit to winning because you know that you can't win all the time it, it cannot be happen. done you will lose and i think it it, it kind of goes then there's that duality inside of them we saw the like almost the two worlds of scott dixon colliding yeah. You know, the, the, you know, the racer and then the, the dad, the family man, I mean the family man and, it, and, and the family, the, the way that they portrayed the family, it felt voyeuristic at times. Yes. Like at one point you're literally, the camera, it feels like you're hunched in the back seat of Scott's car while he's on the phone with a kid, like yeah. talking to her. And, and it, it's so, it's great because you get to see, you know, 
yeah, we put our drivers on this pedestal and we think that they're, you know, super athletes, which they are. And they're almost this sort of immortalizing figures who win these races. And yet, like, he's got to go home and have dinner with his kids and yeah, take care of, I'm sure, shit that happens around the house. Like, it was it was very interesting to see that. And And what I also like is it also showed the duality of the team. Yeah. Like, there's Scott up front, but then, like, you had huge interviews with all of his... Um, <clears throat> his crew, like the guy who did his tires, the I engineer. love that. Like it wasn't just like he's. I think the first person you see in the movie. Isn't yeah, he? he's like, I've worked with Mario. Which at that point, I yeah. was like, I'm here. For or no, it. not the first, but like after the like credits, he's yeah. the first. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Mario, Ayrton, and I was like, well, I'm here for this guy. Well, let's go. Uh, but yeah, it's very cool, and he he calls him Scotty. Yes. You know, which I love that. And, you know, and Scott Dixon says in the movie, you know, that he's been with this team for 16 years. Yeah. He's known a lot of them longer than he knows some of his best friends, mm-hmm. you know, and that they're a family. And you absolutely are after that much time together. Oh, and certainly. what's interesting is that Chip Ganassi basically said the same thing to us when we talked to him at the premiere. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I said, um, cause he said something about, you know, being, you know, them, that they're a team and this and that. And I said, you know, it's, I said, it's interesting. Um, I said, what I enjoy about, about this team is that even though Scott is, you know, like a, you know, this, this superstar, um, that he very much appreciates his team, recognizes his team and doesn't ever act, you know, he's not, he's not ever showboating or anything mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And, um, and Chip actually just laughed and he was like, see, you guys think of him as a superstar and. To us, he's just Scott. Like, we're just family. He's just Scott. It's just Scott. And I was like, I I love that. That yeah. they, they have a very, you know, kind of a family kind of a feel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I, I, I think it picks up. And that's that's one of the things I really enjoyed about the movie. Yeah. And, yeah, the the intertwine of his professional life with his personal life. and It, 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 it like, jump. it's almost like jarring jump cuts, too. Like, the it talks about the crash during the 500. And, like... There's the crash, and then it's like old home movies, and then it's back to the crash, and then it's his kids, and you're like, ah, it, it's like this sudden overwhelming feeling of this is what his life is like. Well, and I I, I think that I agree, and I think that Matthew Metcalf did a really good oh, job yeah. oh, 100%. Of, of how they cut those shots together, you know, because even Emma says at one point that they try to live in the moment because... Mm-hmm. They know that it's life or death. There's yeah. Tony Kanaan, you know, he speaks in the movie and and he says, you know, you never know when you enter a race if you're going to leave in one piece or with your life. Yeah. Like, you don't know. Um, and one of the things that Emma said over and over again was that, you know, she, she every race she just hopes it's not her turn. Yeah. Because she's had two very good friends lose their husbands and in in races. And so, you know, every race she just hopes it's not her turn. And so they very much live in the moment. And when you're a race car driver, you have to. You can't dwell. dwell. You can't mm-hmm. dwell on the past. You you make a mistake. Okay, we're not going to do that in the future. We move on. We move forward. We push past. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think that it, it very much showed kind of how his brain has to work. Yeah. Just back, you know, back and forth. Two Just very different. Switching on and off. And it was it was interesting. Very interesting. Well, and I'll say, and I told you this um, already, but was interesting to me because after his crash, mm-hmm. after they showed the big crash of the 2017 Indy 500, they showed Emma and, um, and one of their daughters. And, you know, and so Emma was saying, you know, like that it was scary and she's glad that he's okay. And then she kind of goes into like, then she just moves right past and she's like, you know, oh, we had such a good car. It was mm-hmm. a really fast car. We could have won this and that. And her daughter is still upset. Yeah. Um, and she's like, you know, and she's like, but daddy's okay. And, and it was like, yes, yep, you're right. Like, yeah, dad's okay. Like, that's the most important part, this and that. You know, it's like for a minute, Emma was like, okay, that's right. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I, you know, she, and I, I love that. That she's like, she doesn't want to, you know, sure, just like move, push her along. Like, yes, right. like you can feel this. Yep, dad's okay. You know, Emma's moving along because that's how their lives go. But yeah. Um, and so, but to me, like my dad was a police officer. Mm-hmm. And so I remember feeling like that of like hoping that my dad was okay like when he would be undercover and he wouldn't come home and it's like i can't call him i don't know you know it's kind of the same thing when you talk about you know the back and forth i'm like he was this badass police officer but then he came home and was the (laughs) tickle monster and so um i was actually thinking about this earlier today is that um you know there's a lot of similarities in both of those jobs like you put your lives on the line definitely um and i think there's a lot of similarities in that like you know duality of 
you know, you're one person when you're at work and you're a completely different person when you're home. Yeah. Um, and to be able to like peek into that and see that it was, yeah, so good. It was so good. And what's amazing to me is how well Scott does at both roles. Yes. Like he's a really good dad. All of the, I mean, all of the scenes with, with the girls and with mm-hmm. him and Emma and, you know, like they're just adorable. Yeah. I mean, everybody loves the Dixons. They're adorable. Right. And he's obviously an extremely skilled driver as well. And I, and I think that's also it again, it, it, it made him more human, but at the same time seeing, even seeing him with his family like that, you're like, man, it almost kind of elevated him even more because that's hard to do. Yeah. To and, and he is. He's he seems like a I mean, yeah, he's it's Scott. We've talked to Scott, we've talked to Emma before. Yeah. They just you know, you you just get the feeling that A, there's so much love between the two of them, and oh, B, yeah. I feel like they would become bears if somebody came at their cross. Oh, yeah. Which like it it and endears you to them even like you couldn't be endeared to them before. Yeah, like, like if at you this didn't, point you're like, ah, God. You're damn it. all in. Scott, even if you only like Scott a little bit, you're almost all in. You're like, well, movie. I'm done. Yep. I'm a Scott Dixon fan now. So, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I, yeah. I will, I will say um, people have kind of asked us about what level of, of child should watch it. There's some curse words. Um, there are. Um, yep. Scott drops a few. few, And um, I think one of her favorites is that Mike Hall just is like, okay. <laughs> Keeps on doing my thing. <laughs> yeah. What was it that Scott said? I can't. He said, it's like your job to fucking tell me we're in this shit. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, he was He was like, that's your fucking job is to tell me we're in the shit. And he's like, he's pretty pissed, pissed. Which which he really doesn't yell at Mike very often. No. I mean, they, they've worked together for the entire time that Scott's been with Chip Ganassi. And, and Mike just doesn't even react. He just, okay. okay. <laughs> my favorite. And then like later, Scott's like, man, I'm sorry. And Mike's like. Mike A has already moved past yeah. it. M- Mike didn't care when you said it. Yeah, and he was like, "It's fine, right?" So next race, <laughs> yeah, he's we're like, "We're gonna do this." Yeah, like it's yeah, I love that. Yeah, that I mean, we <laughs> okay. already have a big appreciation for Mike, but after watching this, like we've that's why we call him Yoda now because mm-hmm. he also drops a few more bombs in that movie. We we're just like, "Damn it, Mike Hall!" <sighs> yeah, he's he's totally Yoda. He's Yoda. I'll tell you what else, Chip Ganassi, I... so much fun. I didn't realize how much I loved Chip Ganassi. And the scene in the movie where it was it was uh, the Detroit race. And it yeah. was, so it was right after the 2017 8500 with the yeah. nasty Scott Dixon crash. And he's talking about different things. And he says, he was like, well, if Evil Knievel over there can keep it on the track. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, he's great. And we enjoyed talking with him at the premiere. Like, he was very just, fun. Such a cool guy. Such a cool guy. Very cool. Although I will say this, like. He is, um, he, he, he also goes into a race mode. Oh yeah. Uh, chip on the track is very different. I think than than chip anywhere else. I believe, I believe. Um, right. and, and this was also in the beginning of the movie, but I just, I enjoyed it because it starts out with this kind of this intensity of race day is mm-hmm. how it kind of starts out. And then it just, then it like backs off into family and things and yeah, but he starts out and it, I think it was for the 500 and he's like between now and the checkered flag. I'd like everybody to focus on one thing and one thing only. Winning this race. Mm -hmm. Put everything else out of your mind. Everything we have to do to win this race today. Yeah. And it's like he, like when he says, I like winners, like, no, he's, He's that's that's no bullshit. Like, he's like, I want everyone to focus on one thing and one thing only. Yeah. And what, what I think, like, the next race, the Detroit race, we're like, well, we can't win Indy. What's the focus? And they're all like, winning the championship. Yeah. He's like, all right, we didn't win Indy. We got to focus on the championship. Right? Like, let's make it happen. All right, next goal. Like, that didn't happen. All right, decision tree. Okay, B, we got to win the championship. Yep. All right. Would have been great if it did, but it didn't. Yep. Moving on. All right, and next. Um, <clears throat> yeah, Mike Hole drops some just knowledge bombs God. in there. He's an amazing person. He really is. I love him. Um... I will, because when we watched it with a group of people, we did not warn them. Um, so this is definitely okay. Yeah. So if you're listening and you like want to be surprised by anything, you first of all you shouldn't have been listening. Well, yeah. uh, but if if you want to have any surprises left, then skip ahead. Skip a, ahead a little bit. Um, look if, at the time. Look at the time on the 
on the episode notes. She'll you'll know when to yeah. Molly Molly will let you hit know. back over. Um, yeah. If you are somebody who needs a warning before something, then you should keep listening. Yeah. Um, because they do show they do the crash um, from Vegas, and they talk about Dan Weldon's death. Very, very openly and very raw. Very raw. Um, um, and and we talked about it, and I think we're both in agreement. It fit. It yes, it it absolutely did. Because uh, one of the things you know, Emma said, you know, that she she wants to talk about the like life and death risks more, but she doesn't because she doesn't want to put those thoughts in Dan's or in uh, in Scott's, Scott's head. head. Yeah, and you know, and just that you know how she kept saying like, I just hope that today's not my turn and this and that and mm-hmm. you know talking about the life and death aspect of it. It, it, yeah. it did fit. It did, and also part of this movie was kind of showing the humanity of our drivers because they are still just people. Yeah. And um, I think Emma says that it's the only time that she's seen Scott cry is when Dan died. Mm -hmm. And they were, I mean, very close friends with Susie and Dan. Oh, yeah. They went to his hotel. Yeah. Like, to to, To the 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 Weldon's hotel room. Um, Like, they moved out and stayed with them, Mm -hmm. with that family, for a couple months after Dan died. Um, like they're just, I mean, it's, it's, they're just quality human beings. Well, like yeah. that's, yeah. And I mean, but yeah, it's so raw. I mean, you see, you see it, you see multiple drivers, a, a footage that I have never seen before. Say, we were with a group uh, of people of, who would have seen footage if that footage existed. And there were, uh, most people were like, I don't, I've, I've never, never seen, seen that, that angle. Yeah. And it was because it was multiple IndyCar drivers openly sobbing. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Not even crying, like sobbing. sobbing. You see Dario sobbing. Mm-hmm. You see Tony Kanan just s- sobbing, losing it. yeah, uncontrollably, I mean... and and Lauren, yeah, yeah. Um, it was very, it, it's very raw. <laughs> it's very raw, but I, uh, as we talked about, it needed. I think it needed to be there. As weird as that it sounds, it did. And I feel like we as fans have all, you know talked about how we dealt with it and this and that, but, you know, we didn't ever really see, you know, the drivers dealing with it. And so it, it does humanize them in a way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think sometimes we as fans get kind of flippant or forgetful that yeah. it are, is life and death. These are you know, people. It, it's like, we want to bitch about, well, I don't like this with the car. I want to go faster. I want this. I want this. I want this. And it's like, well, you know, you can't have everything you want. And if we rush things and we make bad decisions, this is what happens. This is what happens. Um, and so, and to also <laughs> remind us that they are still people. They're still people. And I think something that we sometimes forget is how close all of these drivers are. They are so I mean, close. There's 33 at, at Indy, but there's maybe, you know, 15 to 20 to every other race. And you just see these people every day. Yeah. I it's, mean, it's like the people you work with. Yeah. It's, it's like the people who sit in the cubicles next to you. That's that you've worked with for years too. For like years. You've, you've come up you with them. You spent a lot of time with them. I mean, yeah, it's, it's like a second family. Mm-hmm. And even if you have these rivalries, if you're on opposing teams, like you're all still in it together. Yeah. And it's, so, it was, it's an, it's very a, moving. It's a very, it's a good scene. And I, I don't mean that in like what happened was good, but the scene. Yeah. It's one of those moments where, like, watching it again by myself, I had to kind of stop and, and kind of just, like, rewatch it to, to take everything in. Yeah. There was a lot. Yeah. Because it, it's 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 a good scene. It is. So. It is. No, the producer did an excellent job. Yeah. Um, I can't remember who he told me was in charge of the uh, the music. I think his name was Sean. Yeah. But anyhow, but the music was. Also top. Yeah. Yeah. They did an excellent job, which music can make or break a movie. I mean, we both know that. Yeah. Um, I don't know why I said it that way, but because we're, because, because we're, we're fucking music snobs, and yeah, like not like we score movies, but I'm a hardcore judgy on your music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so, and it was good, and I, you know, and they ended because it talked about his 2017 season. And he did not win the championship. <laughs> I guess not a spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, not a spoiler alert. <laughs> but obviously, he did win the 2018. Yeah. Although when we. Watched it in the theater. They had tacked on a thing at the end that says, says, you know, like that he was the 2018 champion. 
And they did not do that with the movies that you could buy, which no. is funny to me. Which I was like, oh, okay. Which is hilarious because I asked Chip Ganassi what his favorite part was, and he said the part at the end. He was like, at the end, and then he would like smiled and walked away, and we were both like, what? We were like, oh, now we can't wait to see the end. Ah, and Chip. it was that little thing, and then it's not in the the rest of the movie. <laughs> you coy motherfucker. Damn it, Chip. <laughs> Chip. Chip. Oh. oh. Anyway, uh, shit. but yeah, he was a fun guy. He was so so. Watch it. Let us know what you think. Um, and you get to see lots of footage of Scott when he's young. Yes. Oh my gosh, you get to see him <laughs> go karting. You get to see videos, and I love the video where they ask him like, you know, do you want to be in yeah. Formula? Blah blah. He's blah. Like, and he's like, oh, well, yeah, this. Then... I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go up to Ford and do this. He's like, and then I don't know, maybe IndyCar maybe or something. Maybe IndyCar or something. And then they're like, cut to Scott Dixon, IndyCar driver. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, damn right, you wanted to be yeah, an IndyCar yeah, driver. Scott, hell yeah. Yes. Like, everybody in the audience is like. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for not saying formula. Yes. 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 So you know his parents raised him right. That's exactly right. Yeah. He's got good parents. He does. You see them in the movie too. You do. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was just, it was a good movie. It's okay. You should, you should get it. You should watch it. You should let us know what you think. Yeah. Um, in fact, we'll probably throw up a listener or well, not a listener question, but a, like a thread, I an interaction. Yeah. A thread. Yeah. I throw up a post, yeah, for uh, for comments on on the born racer. racer. There you go. Yes, yeah, the thread. It's time for shit. We, we didn't, didn't make up. up. All about the man, the myth, the legend, Scott Dixon. Scott Dixon. So, his record as a driver thus far. Thus far. So, in 1999, he tested with lights at Sebring, broke the track record. Hell yeah! Broke it. Broke it. Broke it like Kim Kardashian broke the internet. He did. In 2001, it was his, Nasser Speedway was his first win. And that was during the cart, but I felt that that was important to put there. It was also his first race. Ooh. First he, race he pulling was like, out a dub. Yeah. Shazam, motherfuckers. Scott Dixon. <laughs> 2003. First season with IndyCar. And he won the season opener at Homestead. I believe he also won the championship that year. He won the championship yeah. in 2003. Yeah. As yeah, I looked sure down, did. I was like, he did yeah. win it. Yeah. He sure did. Yeah. Because he's currently a five time series championship winner 2003, 2008, 2013, 2015, and oh yeah, 2018. Damn right. Let's talk about that man coming in. I mean, I know he had been running cart, but you know. Like, you just, he just show up and be like, so I'm going to win this championship this season. You guys are cool with that? Because that's happening. Yeah. Like, one of my first race, I'm winning the championship. I'm taking this. I'm taking I'm this. I'm, I'm take taking it. this. I'm taking, I'm taking this. Bitches. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hilarious. Well, he has only won the Indy 500 one time, though. I know. I think he really would have won in 2017 had he not gotten in that crash. Well, His yeah. car was super it was bucket fast. super fast. I remember being there for qual. Yeah. Watching that. Yeah. 20 year old record like just gone or well it, it didn't break the record but it was the fastest it's, it's, speed in 20 years yeah. like yeah ridiculous yeah um but yeah the only indy 500 he ever won was in 2008 he's pulled a few times though he has pulled a few times so i feel like that's okay yeah so overall in indycar in since 2003 he's had 14 road course wins five street course wins and 19 oval wins oh well, I guess we really can't call Ed Carpenter or Will Power the Oval Master. I don't know what those two are. As far as <laughs> I did not look up anybody else's. I know. But, I know. But I'm, possibly. I'm just trying to provoke somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Is it sub podcasting? I don't know. There's sub. I'm like sub tweeting. Yeah, it's You're like sub podcasting. Yeah. Sub podcasting. <laughs> Oh, oh, God. But, yeah, interesting. And that's just since 2003. That's just 2003. And our other series, oh, yeah. well, not ours, but in other series. So the Rolex Sports Car Series, Le Mans, um, in 2016, he was third in the GTE Pro Class. Mm -hmm. 2006, he was the overall winner at the Daytona 24 in the Daytona Prototype. In 2015, he was the overall winner at Daytona 24 in the Prototype. In 2018, he was the winner of the GTLM Class at Daytona 24. I remember being there. We sure were. We sure were. He's also been awarded the member of the New Zealand Order for Merit, and he's been New Zealand Sportsman of the Year in 2008 and 2013. I wonder if he gets it again this year. Perhaps he does. He might. He might. He might. Um, American Championship cars. He 
is the third winningest driver with 44 wins Mm -hmm. behind only AJ Foyt and Mario Andretti. I love this. (laughs) That was just for you. I know. (laughs) I like that it's like the stat said like only behind. And I was like, I mean, you don't even need to add only. You just need to be like, there's AJ, there's Mario, (laughs) and then there's Scott. Like, you're just like, what? Yeah. Right? Like, I think... um, That's that's pretty good company to be in. I believe some might call that rarefied air. Yeah. If you will. I I think some might also call that that big dick energy. (laughs) Stop it. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't know how I was going to get those three words on this podcast this week, but as soon as I saw them... Last week, I was like, I'm working these in. This is my this is my phrase for this podcast. Sometimes I keep things from you. That's okay. <laughs> I, I but would. yeah, Scott Dixon 100% has big dick energy. <laughs> but for real. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. And he's, he's the third behind AJ and Mario. Like, like I mean, really? What? Yeah, like that's, yeah. You that's just walk done. around like. I'm the best there ever was, plain and simple. I mean, I wake up in the he's morning. He's the third best there ever was. And I piss as of now. Excellence. Piss excellence. Yeah. yeah. As the, of now, he's not done. Like, that's he's not the biggest done. part about this. Yeah. Like, thus far, like, he going to be around for a couple months. And AJ's the only person who's won more um, series championships than him. Mm-hmm. And only by two. Only by two. I mean, you never know. I mean, Scott's got, got his work cut out for him if he wants to be a multi Indy 500 winner. Yeah, Scott's, Scott's going to have to pick I mean, up on it's that been, one. yeah. I mean, we're just like, yeah. It's been a while, but, but otherwise, I mean, but honestly, you know what, that, again, Mario Andretti only won once Mm -hmm. and he barely pulled that off. Uh, (laughs) I mean, that, that track is a fickle bitch. We've discussed that. Look, sometimes she wants you to win and sometimes she thinks not today. It is not your time. Yeah. Some days it's, it's like, yeah, maybe I'm going to mix things up and not take my meds today. Like (laughs) you just never know. That was the Rossi year. Like, let the me just... track is bipolar and it's off its lithium. Yeah, you never know. You never know. You never know. I will let a rookie win this year on fuel strategy. <laughs> Tell me this race isn't about fuel strategy. Riddle me this. <laughs> oh, but yeah. Amazing lots man. Of, lots of cool facts about Scott lots Dixon. Lots of cool facts about Scott Dixon. Yeah. Also Emma, too, but I didn't put her She's in. amazing. Yeah. I mean, she was an Olympic level runner. Like, okay. Yeah. Also a badass in her own right. Right? Yeah. Also, they, whoever she made a deal with to look that pretty, I would like to know. Yeah. Yeah, Emma. absolutely. Oh, Susie Weldon was at the premiere, by she the way. She was, yeah. I can't remember if we mentioned that. I don't think we mentioned it on this, but we've talked about it. Yeah. But yeah, Susie Weldon was at the premiere because she and Emma Dixon are still very close friends. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty cool. Yeah. All right. I think we need a white flag. This. I think we do. What you got for me? Um... Well, one of the quotes of a driver um, that night was Tony Kanaan. Mm-hmm. And um, I asked him what his favorite thing about the last year had been um, over or over the last season, like what his favorite thing was. And he said getting to talk to AJ every day. That's pretty cool. And I thought from Tony Kanaan, who is good in his own right, is a way. hell of a driver. I mean, and <laughs> is a like home. He's not even a hometown hero. He's just a hometown favorite. Like, Indianapolis loves Tony Kanaan. Truth. Um, it Like, Indianapolis goes apeshit for Tony Kanaan. Yes. And and I'm here for it. I love Tony Kanaan. Yeah, yeah. And he's got a hell of a career and all this experience and all this knowledge and, and everything. And to him, the coolest thing of the last year was that he got to talk to A.J. Foyt every day. I just, like, that. I was like, you're, that's awesome. Yeah, that would be cool as shit. That would be cool as shit. Even with all your experience, you're like, yeah. But this fucking guy? But this guy? This guy. This guy. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. And his wife was super fun oh, and man. and funny. Yeah. Yeah, she was very fun to talk to. What about you? What's your white flag? Uh, It's tire testing on Wednesday. Is it for drops. real or are we just like, no? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually tire testing. I guarantee I get um, <laughs> like, no. a text from Mary Pat. That's why I Unless was Unless like, she listens to this before the tire testing starts. Well, it drops on Wednesday. Mm. So while you're listening to this, if you're in Speedway and you hear the faint sound of cars. It's tire testing. Why, yes, they are tire testing. And why, yes, I am going to be there. Yeah, I, uh, well, actually, we'll see. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It, it could go either way for me at this point. I do not have a two o'clock appointment yet. <laughs> we will let the gods decide. 
Fingers crossed. Nobody get a need to go to your hospital. Yeah, no. As listeners, let's all do that, okay? <laughs> all right, let's uh, check your flag. Let's wave that checker flag. Thanks for listening. Bye.